Numbers come in all shapes and sizes, and wouldn't it be nice if there was a way of writing numbers so that no matter what the number was, no matter how small or big, it always looked roughly the same as a, any other number. It was presented in a standard format. That is what standard form is, converting all different types of numbers, whether they are huge or tiny, so that they look in a similar way. They're, they're in a standard format or a standard form. How do we do that? First, look at the number that you're converting into standard form and find at the beginning of that number a number between 1 and 10. It's kind of like a magic trick. Pick a number between 1 and 10. But in this case, we have to pick the number represented that's between 1 and 10. For example, I couldn't pick for this number 62 million which is the population of the UK, I couldn't pick 62 as my number because that's not between 1 and 10. I couldn't pick 0.62, that's not between 1 and 10. But I could pick 6.2. And I have to be accurate, I can't just write 6 because that wouldn't be accurately conveying this number. So I'm going to write 6.2. Okay, fair enough, You're, you might be thinking but that's not the number. <laughs> you can write it in a standard format, but that's just not the number. That's just 6.2. Well, here's what you do. You need to work out how many orders of magnitude your actual number is compared to 6.2. How do we do that? I'm making it sound hard, but actually it's not. 6.2 would be about here, wouldn't it? The dot would be around here. But our number, the dot's all the way at the end, as always at the end of the number here. What we do is count how many times the dot would have to move. And that's how much bigger 62 million is compared to 6.2. Let's do that. So you go from where the dot would be all the way to the end of the number. It goes once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. So the decimal place had to move seven times. So it's an order of 7 bigger than 6.2. Well, how does that help? What we can do is think about it in this sense. If we multiplied 6.2 by 10 to the power of 7, that would get us to 62 million. 10 to the power of 7, each power of 10 moves the decimal place once. So if you multiply 6.2 by 10, you get 62. Multiply it by 10 squared, or 100, you get 620. So notice, each power of 10 moves the decimal point one place to the right. Here, we needed to move the decimal place seven places to the right, so we wrote times by 10 to the 7. And that is standard form. Let's practice with another number. How about if we had the number... 465,000. Again, try to pick, you have to pick, a number between 1 and 10. Can you see what it is? It would be 4.65. So not 46.5 or 0 0.465, but 4.65. It has to be between 1 and 10. And again, you, you couldn't just write 4 or 4.6 try to be as accurate as possible. 4.65. How many times does the decimal place have to move? Well, there's 4.65. The, the dot would be here, but the dot's not there. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So we'd have to multiply this by 10 to the power of 5 to get our actual number. What we've done in both of these cases is convert the huge numbers, 62 million and 465,000, into a standard format. Notice it always kind of looks the same now. Just a simple number between 1 and 10 multiplied by 10 to a different powers. We'll do one more where we have a positive power of 10 and then we'll practice tiny numbers. Okay, how about let's say 8.7 billion Doo -doo -doo, that's million that's billion 
First of all, let's pick our number between 1 and 10. That would be 8.7. And a quick little tip. Many students make the mistake of counting from the end, so like after the 7. But the dot of 8.7 would actually be between the 8 and the 7, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be after the 7, that would be 87. But the dot would be here for 8.7. But now it goes to the end of the number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So our answer is, in standard form, 8.7 billion is 8.7 times 10 to the power of 9. Okay, what about teeny numbers? It's the same thing, but this time we need to move the decimal place to the left to get our actual number. In other words, the powers of 10 are going to go into the negative. It's, in a sense, it's like dividing by 10 this time. Still, we have to pick our number between 1 and 10. So for this number, 0.0000000586. What's the number between 1 and 10? It would be 5.86. Now, 5.86 has its dot right here, but the real dot is all the way over here. How far away is that? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's 8 to the left. So it's not 10 to the power of 8, it's 10 to the power of minus 8. Remember, a negative power would be like 1 over 10 to the power of 8. In other words, divided by 10 to the power of 8. And that's why the decimal place moves left. When you've got teeny numbers, it's going to be a negative power. When you've got big numbers, it's going to be a positive power. Let's try one more number. So 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.0000064. What's that in standard form? By the way, notice it's still the same standard format. Let's not fill that in so you can see it. It's a number times 10 to the something. A number times 10 to the something. A number times 10 to the something. And even now with teeny numbers, still a number times 10 to the something. One last challenge. Let's do this number. What's the number between 1 and 10? I was about to write 6.4 with the table. That wouldn't work. 6.4. 6.4. And where would the dot be? The dot would be here. And it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left. So it's 10 to the power of 6? No, 10 to the power of minus 6. And that is how to convert numbers into standard form.